Um, this is a, an overview, really, of a side project of mine that um, I started a couple of years ago. And um, just to declare interest, well, it's also a place I used to work at. So, um, um, but it fits quite nicely, I think, with the place memory and tying with the bit in the mix theme. Which I'll just, as a side issue, mention that I've excavated at Radcliffe. I play in the Norris band. Um, so it was all destined to come together. And I met Francis in Sweden in 2012. So thank you for organising all this <laughs> around my interest. Yeah, so um, I'm going to talk about how a Northern Port music venue um, played a part, well, was crucial in, in the interpretation of some broad time ballads. I've made all broad time ballads, but most of it, yes. Um, which is, was one of the outcomes of the project. Um, so, just to um, have a look at that, there's two pictures in front of the wall. Uh, the one on the left is 1980, um, which is when I first went, age just 14, snuck in to watch uh, David Graham so, uh, and a few other people. Uh, and that's how it looks now. And it's, um, it's a funded arts venue, so I can't tell you what you're saying about performance and, um, and how it's not always commercial. And, and viable just in that sector. So it's a funded arts venue really in Manchester. It's been around for a long time. I'm going to just um, do a little overview of the building and the place it's in because what I'm saying essentially is that the, the place identity of that venue as a funded arts venue kind of led to and um, facilitated this project, um, which we'll also talk about as well. Um, so the area the Van der Wall is in is it's kind of the, well, now called the Northern Quarter. It used to be called uh, New Cross and it's on the border of Anchor in the city centre. Um, an area that it turns out we found during this project quite a strong um, history of dissent and protest um, and, and a weird kind of serendipitous link with um, the Penny Broadside, which I'll mention in a bit more detail shortly. Um, so, yeah, uh, Manchester Moon Daily was a heritage loss of London Arts Council funded project. Um, and as I say, I'm, I'm suggesting in this to do place I've been to that it, it's a real example of how places like that can create um, both projects but also um, skills of thought and, and, and just working methods for people who are kind of attracted to those kind of places. Um, it's either to work or to perform. Uh, and as I say, the content of the ballads are a real um, snapshot of, I guess, industrial here in Manchester as well. So, you know, what place identity within the, the context of the ballads. Um, the area uh, it's quite famous for Martin Engels who kind of lived in the area and worked in the area for Chetham uh, and Engine Meadow as well, which is a few hundred metres from, from the, from the building. So, um, that's a, I'll come back to that actually later on. Um, so, I'm going to look in this mix about that area of Manchester, the building itself, um, and, and how it led on to these two uh, projects, or, or this project in, in particular. So, there's um, a map of what, 1650, uh, Manchester, Dean's Gate, if, if you know Manchester, there's a big one lying there. There's the cathedral, which is obviously still standing. And modern Swan Street is there, so very much uh, didn't exist at that point. Um, Manchester was just a, a small town around a, a medieval cathedral. Um, oh, wrong way. That's um, hundred and so years later, it's, it's the other way around, unfortunately. But Cathedral's still there, you can see the footprints of, of medieval Manchester is there, um, and, and, and it's starting to kind of creep exponentially outwards. Um, but Swan Street's up there where that line of pits are, actually, they've got the Shoe Hill pits, there was our extraction pits um, through the building industry, um, but that delineates Swan Street. And it's quite, that's quite a key part of what I think um, the area has retained. It's, it's on the northern edge of the city centre. And even though the rest of Manchester grew exponentially this way, that stayed a very edgy part of town, on, edgy in a lot of with different ways, really, um, for hundreds of years. So you can see by 1810, for those of you familiar with Manchester, there's some very familiar streets, Heritage Street, Old Mill, Great Ancourt Street. And Van on the Wall, by that point, was a, um, was a pub called the George and Dragon. Um, so that's the building that's, uh, that's there. Smithfield Market would, would replace. This area was just behind it there. Um, that was a lot of so then um, gardens, the big houses that existed there. And the shambles, actually, the Manchester shambles was there, did that. They got demolished to the shed. Um, so, uh, what was that? Um, okay, 
from my side. Uh, yeah, so the, the building itself, as I say, it was, it was initially um, a pub, um, and then it subsequently became a music venue. It survived various situations, um, and I believe that there's a, there was a, uh, like a courtyard in the middle, and that, that feature I think, wasn't listed until, um, well, uh, about 1990. Uh, it's been respected by all different versions of the building. It's currently there in the form of a, like a mezzanine area above the bar. Um, and there's no obvious reason why we're looking at the, the history of the building, why it's we've done that, but, but it has retained that. So new building archaeologists might, might have an opinion on that. Um, yeah, so <coughs> there's a thing in retail called clustering, um, which I'll, I'll put a reference to there. I won't read that out of the just for time reasons. Um, but you, you know, you get a square mile in London, you get a diamond place, and obviously diamond. Garden in, in London, and various areas just, just seem to grow up with an affiliation with a, either an industry or a school of thought. And I think that the New Cross area around Bangor Wall um, has become, it's become a cultural area now in Northern Cross. But going back um, to the time that these bars were produced, it, it was, as Mark and Engels found, it was on the fringe of the city centre, a very working class area in some respects, but there's a strong history of descent there that the people printed and made the ballots. Uh, we're all based in, within a few hundred yards of there, it turned out. Um, and, it, and it just, it's retained that edgy quality through to becoming an arts venue now. Um, and it's, it's like uh, Dave was saying with the Moist tradition being, I suppose, broadly of the left for the people who, who perform it anyway. You, it's a bit of a cliche, but you, you very much get that in the arts sector as well. Um, so I'll just go back. Uh, it's called Man the Wall, by the way, because it was a nickname of, of, of the pub. It's there on a piece of cardboard above the door in uh, probably the 1950s, I guess. Um, and, but since then, it had adopted that nickname formally. Um, and that is literally a band on the wall. Uh, it stems from, uh, it was partly to, I think, to fit more people in drinking, but also to protect the band if it got a bit grounded. Uh, that's a V day. Um, but yeah, the band was listed on the wall at one point. Uh, and then various groups um, have kind of adopted the venue over the years, so you, you get different movements, um, which again, time and place identity, you get different sort of countercultures uh, and groups of people moving into uh, the Manchester Music Collective um, had all sorts of influences in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, so they kind of adopted it as their home, and they cut things in this. Apart from that, it was all, all this stuff. Uh, so there was just a few bits of memorabilia there. They'll be joining the GP uh, and the fall and so on. So an influential place on Manchuni music as well, um, in terms of identity, which all doesn't really tie in with the ballads, but it ties in with the, the notion that places are kind of evocative and redolent of uh, what people can say or hints by uh, for their own reasons. Uh, oh, there's a, a Johnny Vision flyer. Yeah, so that the, um, the charity that runs in Six Music, I was a finance manager there before I changed from the centre to Ice Centre's academia, <laughs> not sure which. Um, so that runs the charity. Three um, bits of the, the statement I've kind of highlighted there, which I think play into um, what this session is about, you know, creating and engendering that, that idea of place and identity, therefore stimulating people to both work in, in that environment, but also produce work that reflects that environment. So, um, which is, and that, there's a snapshot of the current um, thing that I put at the top there. You've got numerous communities currently use the, the, the venue, which you can sort of theme with music arts and stranded things. Um, so it's a very multi local kind of. If, um, arena, if you want to call it that, in that respect, but it's all based out of one venue. Um, kind of, so. uh, going forward as well, there's, there's plans to expand into a listed building in the back of the Phil's building. Um, so if that comes off, I won't use the big word, but you never know. Uh, the last expansion is funded with your crew, and um, so there's a plan to do that going forward in, in the next two or three years, I think. So, um, that's an advertising post from 2015, and I, I think it's a really, um, it plays on place identity in a, in a massive way, because, of course, it's a loaded saying, have you been back yet, this implies 
why would you not have been before? Uh, and, it, and it's just referring back to this Manchester's original music venue. Um, and, it, and it just, it, of course, a lot of people can see that won't have ever been, um, but it might just trigger that thing, oh, well, that, I want to be involved in that, if you like that kind of music. So again, the place identity tying into those kind of subcultures was very implicit within that culture. And it would work really well for them, I think, as a, just have to agree on but very much tap say ties into the um, the notion of, of it being not not an inclusive kind of elite place, but uh, but somewhere that people maybe want to just go to to um, to be part of that scene. You know, there's a, n- a number of different scenes based out of it. Um, yeah, that, that's a, a quote from Steve Foster who managed the place uh, in. Well, some would say it's heyday, but actually it was pretty pretty grossy back in the nineteen eighties, to be honest. Um, but as he's put there, people have an affection for the place, it seems to transcend just what they do there, you know, they've probably made friendships there or, or saw bands that lasted in a lifetime. Um, and it does seem to have that, that affection uh, in people's minds. So, let's move on to this project. Um, the project uh, was a reinterpretation of a set of broadside ballads, which are industrial area, era um, songs and lyric sheets that were distributed in pubs and marketplaces and streets. Now this, this collection dates from the 1980s, um, but was brought into the venue by the then publication officer, whose information did pass into the chapter of runs, the charity, then he plays keyboards in a reggae band. <laughs> so uh, through a, a conflict of events, this project was born. Um, so those are some of the, the outputs, I guess, of your CD, or the blog that I wrote, came out. Um, if you mind. Uh, some of the content from, from uh, the booklet. And, and it, we did a few festival events, we did some outreach work in Manchester, did part of the Manchester History Festival, and places that were mentioned in the ballads uh, quite a lot still survive. So again, it's been place identity of the Angel Pub, um, Arizona Shoot Hill, Curzon Moor. A lot of the ballads ballad refer to, um, as I say, dissenting things, the Chartist movement, uh, Peter Lynn is in there. So there was a lot to go at in terms of current Mancunian history, particularly the anniversary of Peter Lynn coming up. So it, it, was, uh, it was an interesting project to, to be involved in, um, and it went down well. Uh, so there's another picture of that. Uh, I was going to play a couple of clips, but we'll maybe have time for that later on, uh, of, t- of, of a song called Victoria Vision on Saturday Night, where one is uh, by Jennifer Top, it's very uh, unaccompanied. How it was probably sung back in the day on, uh, on the street corners or in pubs, and the other is the kind of uh, rock steady version, but um, yeah, maybe I have to go on the website and, and listen to them there instead. Yeah, so just to conclude, I think that, um, as I say, art swimming is like Bamboo Wall, um, are important places where, I suppose, in people's formative years, but also just as people become music fans generally, that they, they, they draw people in and that feeling of identity that they're put there is engendered by the place. Um, and I put a little bit there as well about the fact it's, it's just more than the structure because there are certain places, venues, I think I mentioned there, the Cowan, the Liverpool, the Cubs in York, being two notable ones, that have been, they're still there except they're not the same place, they've literally moved in, in, in both those cases. Um, and they're nicer actually, arguably. As, as I put there, they've been that, that idea and um, John's did some work on uh, about the toilet surface. Um, you know, some of the places that people have got a form of attachment to were really pretty grim. But despite that, you kind of transcend that and it, because it's what goes on there, not so much the fabric of the place. All of those things are all interwoven as well. So, little shouts out to funded venues, use them and protect them or, or lose them. Yeah, so, so I just wanted to, to highlight how that project stemmed from, from that building, and that building stemmed from the area within it. And lots of different communities, be it punk, comedy, reggae. It was the only place, <coughs> the only place in the 80s you could get red stripes in town, for example. <laughs> um, all, all those things just coalesce into, into a real mishmash of, of identity in one respect, but then one firmer identity as a, as a communal pub in another. So, so there we go.